spoofing and impersonation. So when I click on that, I have the option to create a policy and I'm just going to go into my policy here. And as you can see, this can get pretty complex pretty quickly. And so definitely this is where somebody like Agile IT can help you through this and help make sense of this for you. But this allows me to do a few different things here. So let's, let's step through and I'll explain. So I'm just gonna click on edit here. And so this allows me to protect VIPs, if you will, from being impersonated by attackers. It may not make sense to protect everybody in the company. If I'm just a regular individual contributor, just a regular employee, the chances of me getting spoofed is probably slim to none, right? Because after all, I'm, I'm not, I don't have any value, right? However, if my role in the company is somebody that deals with money, CFO accounts payable, uh, maybe I'm other kind of, I'm other, some other, somebody else on the uh, leadership team rather, um, then I'm going to be of more value to that attacker. And they're probably going to want to impersonate me. So going back to the example of Conrad and Sean, uh, Conrad being the CEO, if I impersonate Conrad, then I could probably get Sean to do something like wire transfer me money because it's coming from Conrad, his boss, the CEO, and there, you know, there's, there's power there, there's influence there. Well, by enabling this, this allows me to protect those users. So somebody like Conrad, and I would simply add their name here. And so when an attacker goes to impersonate them, the system will see that it's being impersonated and not even deliver the message. It'll quarantine it or it'll just delete it. Now, consequently, I can also go through and I can enable select domains, whoops, select domains to protect. So uh, maybe I want to do all the domains that I have, or I can just be selective depending on my business requirements. And then the action. So I mentioned being quar quarantining the message, um, but I have some additional actions here available to me. I can redirect it to another email address. I can delete it. But what I would recommend is don't move it to the recipient's junk email folder. Because remember, the name of the game here is you want to make sure you do everything in your power to prevent the user from ever opening the email and thus putting the organization at risk. So I would actually go as far as to say, let's quarantine the message. Um, that way, somebody who's an admin has to go in there and, and pull it out if they need to. Uh, but it stays out of the hands of the users. And so as you can see, this can get complex pretty quickly. So all of this has to align to my business um, my business plan, if you will, and what are my re business requirements around this. Now we have something else called mailbox intelligence. And so this is where we use machine learning and, and artificial intelligence to understand the mail flow patterns on how you communicate with your, with your contacts and your recipients. And then this also allows us to understand whether or not based on, you know, heuristics and the machine learning algorithm, whether or not you're being impersonated. So that's just another layer of protection. Again, we're all about defense in depth here. Now, if I have, and maybe I'm a little bit of a larger company and I have uh, you know, a, a PR agency or a marketing agency that sends out email newsletters to my customers, then I would have to add them here as a trusted sender. So, so they're legitimately impersonating or spoofing me uh, for business purposes. So I can adjust that here. But this is where I would go in and add what we call an impersonation policy. And as you can see here, if we just go back a screen, there's quite a bit that I can do here to really fine tune this. Now, the last thing here is under advanced settings, this allows me to get really granular. And again, this is all based on machine learning and artificial intelligence. So if I enable this policy and I wait a few weeks and nothing's really happening, I'm still getting phishing emails coming through and I'm still getting impersonation emails coming through. Well, let's take this little slider here and slide down a notch. Let's save it. Let's wait a few more weeks and continue to monitor and see if that, that helps. Um, and this will basically adjust the amount of aggressiveness that the, uh, the algorithm has when it goes through and analyzes the mail flow. So again, there's a lot here. Um, if, you're, if you're being subject to impersonation attacks or spoofing attacks or just phishing in general, definitely take advantage of some of these policies here. Mm -hmm.